I think we have a respectable sense of how muscles contract on the molecular level. Let's take a step back now and just understand how muscles look, at least structurally, or how they relate to things that we normally associate with muscles. So let me draw, let me say I draw a flexing bicep right here. So that's someone flexing their bicep. That's uh, their elbow, and let's say that's their hand right there. So this is their bicep, and it's flexing. So this is their bicep, I think. We've all seen diagrams of what muscles look, at least on kind of a macro level. And it's connected to bones at either end. So let me draw the bones. I'm not going to detail where. So it's connected to the bones at either end by tendons. So this right here. So right here would be some bone. Right there would be another bone that it's connected to. And then this is tendons, which connects the bones to the muscles. So this right here is tendon. Tendon, and we have the general sense connected to two bones. When it contracts, it moves some part of our skeletal system. So we're actually focused on skeletal muscles. Skeletal. The other types are smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscles are those, as you can imagine, in our heart. And smooth muscles are, these are more involuntary, slow moving muscles and things like our digestive tract. And I'll do a video on that in the future. But most of the time when people say muscles, we associate them with skeletal muscles that move our skeletal system around, allow us to run and lift and, and talk and do and, and bite things. So this is what we normally associate. Let's dig in a little bit deeper here. So if I were to take a cross section of this, of this bicep right there, if I were to take a cross section of that muscle right there, so let me do it big. So if this is the cross section, so the bicep or that muscle, I'll stop saying biceps because I want to be general. So I'm going to take a cross section of it. So this is the cross section. This is where I've taken my cut. And then. It'll look something like this. This is the inside of this muscle over here. Now, I said back here we had our tendon. Back here we had our tendon. And then there's actually a covering. And it's, it's, there's no strict demarcation or dividing line between the tendon and the covering around this muscle. But that covering is called, is called the epimyceum. Epimyceum, and it's really just connective tissue that covers the muscle, kind of protects it, it reduces friction between the muscle and the, the surrounding bone and other tissue that might be in this person's arm right there. And then within, within this muscle, you have connective tissue on the inside. Let me do it in another color. I'll do it in orange. This orange tissue right here, and I'll make this orange tissue, and then it's, it divides off little, I guess we could call them fibers of some sort. So we have this orange tissue right there. This is called a paramyceum. And that's also just connective tissue inside of the actual muscle. Perimyceum. And then each of these things that the paramyceum is dividing off, so each of these things at the paramyceum, let me say, let's say if we were to take one of these things and allow it to go a little bit further. So if we were to take this thing right here, let this, what this paramyceum is dividing off, and if we were to pull it out, actually, let me do this one right here. If we were to pull this one out, just like that, so you have the paramyceum surrounding it. right? This is all paramyceum. And it's just a fancy word for connective tissue. If paramyceum, and there's other stuff in there. You could have nerves, and you could have capillaries, all sorts of stuff. Because you have to get blood and 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 neuro neuronal signals to your muscles eventually. So it's not just connective tissue. It's other things that have to be able to eventually get to your muscle cells. So each of these, each of these, I guess you call it subfibers, but these are pretty big subfibers of the muscle. This is called a fascicle. This is a fascicle right here. So that right there is a fascicle. That's a fascicle. And then in the connective tissue inside of the fascicle is called the endomyceum. Endomyceum. So let me draw the endomyceum right here. So once again, more connective tissues has capillaries in it, has, ner has nerves in it, all of the things that have to eventually come in contact with muscles, with muscle cells, where inside of a single muscle. 
So let me draw let me draw the endomycium. So all this green connective tissue is endomycium. Endomycium. And each of these things that are in the endomycium are an actual muscle cell. This is an actual muscle cell. So I'll do it in purple. So this thing right here, I can pull it out a little bit. Let me pull this thing out a little bit, just like that. So if I pull this out, this is an actual, this is an actual muscle cell. This is what we wanted to get to, but we're going to go even within the muscle cell to see, understand how uh, all the myosin and, and the actin filaments fit in into that muscle cell. So this right here is a muscle cell or a myofiber. Myofiber. The two prefixes you'll see a lot when dealing with muscles. You're going to see myo, which you can imagine refers to muscle. And you're also going to see the word sarco, like sarcolemma or sarcoplasmic reticulum. So you're also going to see the prefix sarco, and that's flesh. So, you know, sarcophagus, or uh, you could think of other things that start with sarco. So, sarco is flesh, but, you know, when Muscle is flesh, and myo is muscle. So this is myofiber. This is an actual muscle cell. And so let's zoom in on that actual muscle cell. So let me actually draw it really a lot bigger here. So an actual muscle cell, it's called a myofiber. It's called a fiber because it's, it's, it's longer than it is wide. And they come in various, so let me draw the myofiber like this. So this is our, my muscle cell right here. And I'll take a cross section of the muscle cell as well. So this is my myofiber. Myofiber. And these could be, you know, relatively short, uh, several hundred micrometers, or it could be quite long, or at least quite long by cellular standards. We're talking uh, several centimeters. So several centimeters, if you think of it as a cell, that's quite a long cell. And because it's so long, it actually has to have multiple nucleuses. And actually, to draw the nucleuses, let me do a better job drawing the myofiber. I'm going to make little lumps in the outside membrane where the nucleuses can fit on this myofiber. Remember, this is just one of these individual muscle cells. And they're really long, so they have multiple nucleuses. And let me take its cross section, because we're going to go inside of this muscle cell. So I said that it has mul it's multinucleated. So, so if this is, if we kind of imagined its membrane being transparent, then there would be one nucleus over here, another nucleus over here, another nucleus over here, another nucleus over there. And the reason why it's multinucleated is so that over large distances, you don't have to wait for proteins to get all the way from this nucleus all the way over to this part of the muscle cell. You can actually have the, the DNA information close to where it needs to be. So it's multinucleated. I read one, I think it was 30 or so nucleus is per millimeter of muscle tissue is what the average is. I don't know if that's actually the case. But the nucleuses are kind of right under the membrane, right under the membrane of the muscle cell. And you remember what that's called from the last video. That right, the membrane of the mu muscle cell is the sarcolemma. 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 Or sarcolemma, however you want to call it. These are the nucleuses. The nucleuses. And then if you go even within, if you take the cross section of that, there are even tubes within that. There are tubes within that called myofibrils. So here, I could take, there's a bunch of tubes inside of the actual cell. Let me pull one of them out. So I've pulled out one of these tubes. This is a myofibril. Myofibril. And if you were to look at this under a light microscope, you'll see it has little striations on it. You'll see it has little striations. So the striations would look something like that, like that, like that. And then there'll be little thin ones like that, like that. And this is inside of these myofibrils is where we'll find our myosin and actin filaments. So let's zoom in over here on this myofibril. We'll just keep zooming until we get to the molecular level. So this myofibril. Which is, remember, it's inside of the muscle cell, inside of the myofiber. The myofiber is a muscle cell. Myofibril is a, you can view it as a tube inside of the muscle cell. And that's, these are the things that are actually doing the contraction. So if I were to zoom in on a myofibril, you're going to see it. It's going to look something like that. And it's going to have those bands in it. 
So the bands are going to look something like this. You're going to have these little short bands like that, like that. Then you're going to have you're going to have wider bands like that, like these little dark thing. Let me make trying my best to draw them relatively neatly. And there could be a little line right there. Then it's the same thing repeats over here. So each of these units of repetition, each of these units of repetition is called a sarcomere. This is a sarcomere. Sarcomere. And these units of repetition go from one, this is called a Z line, Z line, to another Z line. And all of this, this terminology comes out of when people just looked at it on a microscope and they saw these lines, they started attaching names to it. And just so you have the other t terminology, we'll talk about how this relates to the myosin and the actin in a second. This right here is the A band, A band. And then this distance right here, or these parts right here, these are called the I bands. I bands, and we'll talk about really in a few seconds how that relates to the mechanisms we or the 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 units that we talked or the molecules that we talked about in the last video. So if you were to zoom in here, if you were to go into this into these myofibrils, if you were to take a cross section of these myofibrils, what you'll find is if you were to cut it up, maybe slice it this well. It's hard to if you were to slice it parallel to the actual screen that you're looking at. If you you're going to see something like this. So this is going to be your Z band. Which is really just so that's your Z band. This is your next Z band. So I'm zooming in on one sarcomere now. This is another Z band. Then you have your actin filaments. You have your actin filaments. Now we're getting to that molecular level that I talked about. So you'll have your actin filaments. I'll draw them like that. I'll just draw a couple. You have your actin filaments that look like that. Let me label it. So these are the actin, actin filaments. These are the actin filaments. And then in between the actin filaments, you have your myosin. You have your myosin filaments. So let me draw it. Myosin. So let me draw it in this color. Remember, the myosin filaments had those two heads on them, right? They each have two heads, and they two heads like that that crawl along. That crawl along the actin filaments. I'm just drawing a couple of them, and then they're attached at the middle, just like that. And we'll talk about in a second what happens when the muscle actually contracts. And I could draw it again over here. So it has many more heads than what I'm drawing, but this just gives you an idea of what's happening. So these are the myosin. These are the myosin, I guess, proteins, and this, they all intertwined, like we saw in the previous video. And then there'll be another one over here. I don't have to draw it in detail. So you can see immediately that the A band corresponds to where we have our myosin. So this is our A band right here, A band. And there is they, there is an overlap, right? You, they do overlap each other even in the resting state. But the I band is where you only have actin filaments, no myosin. So this is the I band, I band right there. And then the myosin filaments are held in place by titan, which is kind of you can kind of imagine as a springy protein by titan. Now I want to do it a different color than that. Let me do it in. So that right there. So that's the myosin is held in place by titan. That right there is Titan. It's attached to the Z band by Titan. So what happens? So we have all of these when when a neuron when a neuron excites, so let me draw an endpoint of a neuron right here, the endpoint of an axon of a neuron right there. It's a motor neuron. It's telling this guy to contract. You have the action potential. The action potential travels across, travels along the membrane, really in all directions. And then it eventually, if we look at it from this view, there you have those little T you have those uh, transverse or T tubules that essentially go into the cell or and and uh, continue to to propagate the action potential those uh, trigger the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium the calcium attaches to the troponin to the troponin that's attached to these actin filaments that moves the tropo myosin out of the way, and then the crawling can occur. The myosin can start using ATP to crawl along these actin filaments. 
And so as you can imagine, as they crawl along, they're going to put the, they're going to let me switch colors. They're going to their power stroke is going to push. They're going to push the. You could either view it as the actin filaments in that way, or you can say that the myosin is going to want to move in that direction. But you're pulling on both sides of a rope, right? So the, the myosin is going to stay in one place. And the actin filaments are going to be pulled together. The actin filaments are going to be pulled together, and that's essentially how the muscle is contracting. So we've hopefully in this video connected the big picture from the flexing muscle all the way over here to exactly what's happening at the molecular level that we learned in the last few videos. And you can imagine when this happens to all of the myofibrils inside of the muscle, right? Because the sarcoplasmic reticulum is releasing calcium generally into the into the cytoplasm of which is also called myoplasm because we're dealing with muscle cells, the cytoplasm of this muscle cell, the calcium floods all of these myofibrils, it's able to uh, it's able to attach to all of the troponin or at least a lot of the troponin in on top of these uh, actin filaments and then the whole muscle contracts. And then when that's done, each muscle each muscle fiber or myofiber or each muscle cell will not have that much contracting power. But when you couple it with all of them that are around it, if you just have one actually working or a few of them, you'll just have a twitch. But if you have all of them contracting together, then that's actually going to create the force to actually do some work or actually pull your bones together or lift some weights. So hopefully you found that mildly